Good morning. We will be looking at the use of a nano DNA in place of a, an antenna analyzer. Typically, you would buy either from Rig Expert or MFJ. And uh, nano DNA is a very inexpensive, uh, around about $60, uh, depending on where you buy it. And it has a lot more capability than just measuring standing wave ratio. But one of its basic functions, if you, have, if you have antennas, is to do just that, is to measure standing wave ratio. So what we're looking at in front of us on this screen is a nano VNA. Right now I'm going through the calibration procedure to, uh, to make sure that the VNA, the VNA is calibrated for what we're doing to measure. So right now I have a, uh, an, an open uh, installed on my pigtail. And you can see on the Smith chart that the marker is at the very far right corner of the Smith chart, which indicates an open. Next, we will put a, uh, a short So right now we only have the Smith chart on. And I have the short. Make sure it's tight against that pigtail. And uh, next we'll put a load And I've only calibrated the nano VNA to these. I'm just demonstrating that what happens to the Smith chart when you put up the different calibration standards on the nano VNA. So right now I've got the load on and the Smith chart is showing that, uh, that the marker is right in the middle of the Smith chart, which is indic indicative of 50 ohms. So typically what you'll do is to step through a calibration using these three standards by going to uh, cal, calibrate, and go through the, the, the calibration procedures uh, with the different standards. So put the open on, press open, then put the short on, press short, put the load on, press load, and uh, and then say you're done. And I've already saved it to the save zero portion of, of this of of this menu. So now we're ready to uh, measure an antenna for standing wave ratio. That's my antenna Smith chart. It's not measuring standing wave ratio, but what it's doing is measuring the complex impedance of the antenna. So if we want to measure standing wave ratio, we'll be on channel zero. And we'll turn off the, the trace for the Smith chart. And we'll use trace one or trace zero, let's say, which is a log mag of the, of the reflection loss. And uh, we'll change the format to SWR. Now, that's, uh, let's change the, the scale now. to uh, 0.5 per division. And so that's a, a much user-friendly 
display. So each line, so a standing wave ratio of one would be the bottom line. The standing ratio of one and a half will be the second line. And the standing wave ratio of two will be the third line. We can even change it to something that's that suits the eye better if you want. But right now we're looking at an 80 meter end fed half wave with its various resonances. And so you'll see the resonance at 80 meters and then around 40 meters, near 10 meters, um, sorry, 30 meters, 80, 40, 30. And uh, I get confused between megahertz and meters. And the next one is right around 20 meters. Um, it's below 17 meters. So 17 meters is up near 18, 18.1. So 18 meters is above three. And the uh, next one is uh, near 15 meters. And this one is near 12 meters. 12 meters actually has a usable dip right around 1.5 and then 10 meters, which has a, a usable dip uh, around 1.5. So that's your uh, end fed half wave. Let's switch over to the 40 meter dipole. 40 meter dipole has a different characteristic in terms of where, where it resonates. And it resonates on the 40 meter band and on the 15 meter band. It does not resonate at the 20 meter band. There's no dip near 20 meters, which is right around here. And we can take the jog wheel to where the 20 meter band is. Right around there is 20 meters, and it has a standing wave ratio of 3.13 to 1. Um, so if you want to look at um, just the band allocation, let's say for 40 meters, we change the start stop of the stimulus from, let's say, uh, let's start from 6.5 megahertz. And uh, then let's stop at uh, 7.5 megahertz. So we can capture the dip. And so that's the 40 meter band, stopping at 7.5 megahertz and this dipole was uh, tuned quite well and it dips um, right around uh, seven megahertz which is the start of the of the 40, 40 meter band um, we could shift the resonance by cutting the dipole pruning the dipole so that seven megahertz is probably on the rising side of the SWR on, on, on this side, let's say 1.5. So we can, we can further improve the, the distribution of the standing wave ratio so that it's more friendly to an operator by having more of the sweet spot where you operate near the, near the minimum. Let's say you're on the CW operator, then you probably want to have that dip right where you like where you like to operate and if you're a single sideband operator you want to have that dip uh, to be closer to where you operate let's say it's 7.2 megahertz but that can be done just by by changing the length of the antenna so that i will end the video here just to show you what a nano vna can do for measuring um, standing wave ratio, which is comparable to what a um, $600 analyzer uh, 
will do. And uh, for example, the rig expert um, A35, I think it's A35, um, costs right around $250, but it's only limited to a top end of 30 megahertz. If you wanted to uh, see what your antenna is doing in the six meter band, you'd have to go to a more expensive um, um, analyzer, which is the A55. Uh, so, and this is, uh, that let's say is 300 something, around $350. And this nano VNA is fifty dollars or sixty dollars, depending on where you get it from. So it's a much cheaper alternative for a lot more capability. Um, this nano VNA can measure the loss of a transformer, for example, or uh, measure the performance of a low-pass filter, uh, measure length of a coax, things that an antenna analyzer is not really designed to do, but the nano VNA can do. So I'll end this video here. Thanks for watching and uh, like and subscribe to my, to my channel and uh, we'll see you at the next video.